Hello, J team. It's your boy Justin coming at you with another new video here. So what I got for us today is an accordion. It's a 120 bass Titano accordion uh, to read. Um, it is. Um, it has a full size keyboard, so it has all. He's 120 bass on this side. Um, I got some IPA as a profile alcohol cleaning solution um, and a bunch of tools on the side here. Um, so this accordion, oops, sorry guys, bumped the table. So this accordion here has had problems with the uh, keys in the front where certain ones, as I'm playing, like one right here, I don't know if you can hear that, but it'll start squeaking. So what I'm gonna do is keyboard player pair on this accordion. Now the left side's working perfect. All the buttons pressed down, spring back up fine. There's no problems there, but there's definite up here. All these are working really nice. So what I can do, let's see, can you guys still see the accordion? Yes, you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, in behind. So on each side, there's a little threadable um, uh, screw. I'll show you right here. This is the little screw. Uh, put one right here. Um, I'm just taking it out. Uh, here's the other one. And then the face plate just pulls forward and pops right off. Here's what the face plate looks like. Here's what the um, tube chamber looks like inside it. So those are the little tube chambers. And I'll show you the front of the accordion again, a little closer up. I don't know if you guys can read that. Okay. So I'm gonna have a, a spot where I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then after so, Here's what the accordion looks like inside, okay? So now, inside here, there is a pin, and you can pull this long pin out, and all the keys just come out, okay? So I gotta flip this towards me, you're gonna see oh, when I do this. There we go, you'll see the mechanics now. So on this side, there's a little screw here, which should be covering a little um, pin, and that pin will just pull all the way out. Now when I do that, all these will come out. But before I can do any of that and have them come out, I gotta take this panel right here off. So using some little pliers, I'm just gonna loosen them off. One, two, um, three, four, and I will make a video, special for you guys, I will make some music videos playing this exact accordion. Um, so you guys can uh, hear what she sounds like. And we're going to make sure, like even if the little squeaking's, you know, still happening a little bit, that's not bad. But if it's happening real badly and it's really squeaking, then I got to fix that. Um, which that's what we're trying to do today. Let's fix it. So, this accordion used to have clacking keys, and I did a little bit of repair. I'll show you what I did on the other side of this um, lever right here, because it was hitting up against the metal. Here are the keys, and it's hitting against some pins that I just ground down nicely, to not to the point where they wouldn't catch anymore, but to the point where the keys wouldn't hit up against them. It's you know when they're manufactured, it happens, you know. Sometimes accordions have parts that are, you know, not manufactured quite right, and, well, when that happens, um, well, you can get clacking keys from that. Um, and it usually happens right away. Like, as soon as you buy the accordion and start playing, you realize that all the keys are clacking and there's a few other things, right? So, um, all the reeds sound really good in this accordion, and the bass sounds nice. Um, it's just that those squeaking keys. So now, holding on all four corners here, 
this whole piece will just lift right up as you can see there it's just lifting up and slides out and here's the um, this front piece I'll show you it. whoops sorry guys don't worry that didn't hurt the accordion part here this is made out of metal it's solid I'm gonna try not to do that again though but here I'll show you it work you guys see that? Here, let me flip it the other way. I'll make it easier for you to see it. So what I actually worked on, bring it a little closer, right here, these three, there's a pin that came out, you know, about that far on each of them, which is way too long, and the keys were hitting up against that. So I just ground them down to their flush with the brass piece here no more clacking. So this piece works really good. Um, but what we want, now that I eliminated that, have a look here. See how they're all bare? Now all the keys can freely and nicely come out. So what you want to do is you want to put them um, in a nice line, um, all in the right order, because if you don't put them in back in the right order, the accordion's not going to work. So make sure you put them in the right order and keep them in the right order. So clean them one at a time, keeping them in the right order, and then put them in back one at a time. Uh, I suggest, you know, start with the high key and then go work your way down throughout the last and then push the, the pin in all the way. Um, one thing I forgot, I'm going to actually have to go off camera for a few seconds here, or well, more like a few minutes, but I'll just so you guys can analyze and look at this accordion while I'm going to get, uh, what I'm going to get is some special sewing, or sorry, not sewing machine oil, um, hair clipper oil, and we're going to oil up the, uh, the rod that, and the keys and all that. So I'm going to let you guys have a look at this while I'm doing that, okay? I'll be right back. Here's the oil that I like to use. This is the oil. So it's um, I'm gonna put it on this side so it doesn't get spilt. So uh, also I got to uh, eh, take this electrical tape that I put on here. It's only there because if it tips, it'll leak. So I put that there to stop that from happening. See the bottle's not broken or anything. Now that I took it off, it just leaks without the tape but it's all good. It's not going to get tipped over or anything. Or at least I hope it doesn't. And I got my good old uh, McDonald's. So I hope everybody's having a good day today. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, click on the thumbs up. Um, make sure you uh, click on the bell down below. And when you click on that, um, you want to click on all no um, all notifications so you get all my new videos and uploads and everything like that. Mm. So, let's work on this accordion, shall we? So let's get this thing back up and running. Okay, so, all right. Right. It's got to go this way, and then this way you guys get to see the front of the accordion some more while I do that. Um, so what I'm doing, hmm. ah, flathead, screwdriver, see if this one's the right size. Um, a little big, take my, my hammer, it's a special type, you unthread it. And here's a screwdriver. So this one, I'll see if it fits. If not, I'll unthread this and there's another screwdriver underneath that. Well, not 
Not quite. So let's unthread it again. Unthread it one more time. Ah. That there, that there. Here's another screwdriver. Let's see, that one should. Yeah, that fit. Huh. It's giving me. Oh, never mind. I got it. I was going to say it's giving me trouble, but I got it. Um, so I'll let you guys know shortly here whether. Um, we have a pin underneath or not. Uh, that is very strange. So this accordion has two pins, so two shafts. Okay, this is where I gotta be careful. So one shaft is for the black keys and the other shaft is for the white. So we have two shafts. So you don't wanna mix those shafts up because the holes will be different, like there will be different size shafts. So if you mess that up, well, oops. To go, uh, all I can say, if you met, mess those up, good luck getting them back out. So be careful, okay? So what the one I'm gonna remove first, I'm just trying to decide here, should I remove all the white ones first or should I remove all the black keys? I think I'll remove all the black keys first and then, the only, the only problem that I'm having here huh, is if I remove all the black keys and put them in here in, a, in an order, well then I gotta remember where to put the white keys because you're all in the pattern. So what I'm gonna try and do is pull one rod out a little bit and then pull in the other rod out. So this is gonna be tricky. I don't know if it's gonna pull out. Oh, yep, yeah, it's removing. There's one rod. You guys hear that squeaking? Ah, that's what you don't want to have happen. The springs are very good in this. Well, here's key number one. Whatever, <coughs> whatever you do, don't let these go flying. This one went flying. Luckily, nothing broke. Holy moly. See, check out the springs there. This is a spring right here. Wow, that was lucky. <laughs> I didn't realize they were gonna go flying like that. Dang. Okay, so I'm gonna put this key way over here. Cause I need to have them fairly far like this so I can fit all the keys on the table. Okay, and now I'm really cautious. I'm keeping my hand over those keys so they don't go flying like that. Cause I don't want the little, uh, pads to pop off because you're held on by honey wax and let's just say I don't have any honey wax in Rousin so got to uh, make sure they don't go flying like that um, can I pull them by hand oh darn they're pretty pretty tight okay So, okay, there's one of the black keys. And see what I'm doing is I'm putting them in the right order and then go like this. Okay. Here's another long key. So yeah, you just want to make sure you keep them in the right order and then give them a good cleaning and, you know, Okay, that's as far as I pulled out the keys so far. And try not to pull up on the keys very hard because you can lift your keys that way. So be careful. But if they want to come out nice and easily, then you know, okay. I'm going to try using my hand again to pull it. Nope, still using pliers. <laughs> Okay, please don't go flying. Oh, is it not out all the way yet? Huh, it's kind of strange. Apparently they need to be pulled out farther. That one I got by hand. Hmm, the one
one for the black keys is being a little stubborn. I got it though, it's okay. Whoa. <laughs> Ew, that really doesn't sound good. Like it's making a loud squeaking. So it's definitely dry oil in there. Okay, another black key. Hmm. A little bit corroded, but you know what? I could fix it. Another key. Keys are nicely coming apart. Now, if you're really careful, nothing's going to break, okay? Um, I can tell you right now, these springs that are here, they're very, very easy to replace. Um, and lots of you out there may be wondering, can you replace these pads that are honey waxed on? And yes, you can. It costs a little bit of money, but yes, they are replaceable. Okay. Well, there's definitely dust and stuff in there. I'll show you what I mean by each rod is. If I'm looking at the size of the rod holes, and you know what's funny, the uh, black, the, the rod for the black row is just a slight bit smaller, like just a tiny bit, not much, but it is a little bit. But whatever you do here, I'll show you. See right here where my finger's pointing, right here and here are the two rods. Right here where my finger, finger's pointing now is for the white keys. The one near the back is for the black keys. I'll pull on the one for the black keys. I'm going to try to see if I can do it by hand now. Oh, yep. I have a start. There we go. I'll put my hand here um, like this. And hopefully you guys, there we go. You guys can see those rods now. They're coming here and here. All right. Oh, I just need to put my shoulder there and that makes it easier to see. There we go. Okay, that's cool. Whoop, hit my hand with that. Don't worry, I didn't get injured. It's all good. Yeah, they can be sharp, but you would have to like really like whack, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> Accidentally, it's happened before where you accidentally poke yourself and it's like, oh, that wasn't very pleasant. But, yeah. Yeah, see? I'll show you. See? No injury. Perfectly fine. So anyway, we'll continue taking keys off. And then after all the keys are, oh, you know, there's some gunk in there. That's asking to be cleaned. Hmm. Keep my hand here. I'm going to have to move the keys a little farther back because, you know, it's okay. It's not a problem. I can do that. Um, and afterwards, I guarantee you this accordion is going to do a lot better. And once it's oiled, it'll just be a moment of time before there's absolutely no squeaking and or anything like that. Um, That's better. So you can see all the keys right here. Um, there's another one. And you know what? This is going very well. Okay. Rods need to come out more. Put my hand right here. Okay, this key wants to pop up. A few do. Now, I have been asked if you replace all these pads, even though the pads are there, if you replace them, can that stop leaks if there's leaks coming from where the pads are? And yeah, it, that will work. Um, it can be a little bit pricey, but it will work. But you got to remember, you have to use honey wax and rosin the right amount. Um, make sure, I, I think it's half and half. But research it. Make sure you get the right amount. Whoa, that came out a little far there.
We're getting closer to where that squeaking key is. There's a few that squeak. Ah! <laughs> I got a key trying to escape before I get to it. Ah. There's a lot of dust in here though. Alright. Oh, come on. <laughs> you, you little trickster. There we go. It's trying to trick me, that white key there. You know, I have a lot of people saying, well, if it's, you know, when you send an accordion out to a repair, let's say like Italy or, or like way out there, you're paying thousands of dollars to do that. When you can send them to a local place and pay, well, maybe half of that, I'm like three, four hundred dollars, maybe a little less. Depending on the accordion, it really does depend on the accordion. Um, if the accordion like this one that I'm working on, be more like to repair keys and stuff like that would be between two hundred and three hundred dollars okay and hey I'm more than willing to do that so anyone out there needs your accordion like lifted keys sticking keys uh, sticking buttons you know two to three hundred dollars I'll do it okay just uh, shoot me a um, a message like leave leave a comment down below and I will uh, um, make sure to uh, reply to you and um, do some uh, repairs and stuff like that if you need repairs done. I'm try pulling both rods at the same time. Hey, that works pretty good. Um, so, you know, accordions are one instrument that, there's just something about the accordion that's really cool, you know, and I even can play, this is going to be hard to believe, but I could even play the button accordion, the diatonic accordions. Um, I haven't tried playing a chromatic one, that's the chromatics where it has, instead of white and black keys, it's white and black buttons. Um, it would be both the same sound both ways, just black and white buttons instead of keys. Now, the diatonics are all white buttons and are all black buttons, whatever version of accordion you got. And it's one sound one way, another sound the other. I could play those accordions. And again, if I can repair those kind of accordions too. Um, broken reeds, like actual fully broken reeds, those I can't really do much with unless you have another accordion that has the exact same uh, tuning and all that with good reeds, then maybe. Um, but I'm more the uh, sticking and lifted key and sticking or, um, or not springing back uh, buttons on the left side. Okay? Just so everybody watching my video here is aware, um, just in case you have an accordion you want me to look at. Um, if you have a sticking reed that's not broken, but it's sticking, then lots of times I can get them to unstick and work. But, you know, but yeah, two to three hundred bucks. You know, anyone that has an accordion out there that they need me to repair, but, uh, I live in Canada, so shipping can be pretty darn expensive, you know, especially when it's an accordion. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I gotta move some tools here. Out of the way because the keys are gonna 
Need some space. There we go. So now they're going to come all the way over here. There's quite a few more keys to go. And then we can start with, uh, with cleaning them. We're going to start from this way, work our way this way. And why that is, is because if I was to take those rods, push them all the way in and start putting them in like that, that wouldn't work very well because the rods don't come out this way, they come out that way. And the only way to put the keys back in is if you start pushing them in like that, or putting the keys in this way. All right, so some of these keys on certain accordions, I think some of the honer, German honers, the keys are actually screw in instead of rods. And I think there's some Italian accordions like that. Um, but those ones, yeah, you just take the screws on it, they just pop off. But again, keep them in the right order. Because if you don't keep them in the right order, all I can say is good luck getting her back together. You can definitely give it a try. Um, or, if you end up doing that, buggering it up, and you don't mind paying two to three hundred dollars to have it fixed, you can ship it out to me, and I'll put all those keys back in for you. You know, because two to three hundred dollars, what I mean by that is, it depends on how much work it's going to take to get all those fixed. So this isn't bad, but a job like this that I'm doing here, with time and labor, like the time and labor included, would be um, $260. Um, and if it's a lot harder work than this, and a lot more to do, um, or if it comes up to me scrambled and I have to figure out which keys and that, that would be more like a $360 job. That's including time and labor, okay? Um, but yeah, just so you're aware. But then you get your accordion back nice and working order. So, so yeah. Almost there, you guys. We're almost there. Have to have some more coffee in a second here. Hope everybody's having a good day. And, uh, yeah, just shoot me comments, leave, um, send me a bunch of comments um, if you have questions on, on accordions, because there's lots of things I can answer on accordions, because, well, the um, one most, most of, number one favorite instrument out of all instruments that there is, is the accordion with me. That's my favorite. I also have a... Uh, 260-year-old church pump organ that uh, I will be making a video on playing and uh, well I restored it and you know it's a cool thing I picked up um, and just letting um, people that are watching my YouTube here just letting you all know it is for sale um, the my church pump organ and I'm asking two thousand five hundred dollars so twenty five hundred dollars and it is a very good working um, I'm gonna say 1780s to 1800s maybe even a little newer than that it could let's let's just say 1780s to 1880s okay but it's fully working and sounds really good um, and I will play it for you guys. So if you have an interest in buying it, um, leave, leave a comment down below. Um, but I won't be able to ship it out to anywhere. Um, it's uh, you pick up only. Because um, like I said, I live in Canada. I don't have a vehicle. I can't drive around. I just bus to places. I walk to places. So you would have to have a vehicle and it would take two to three people to move this organ. Um, but it is a really, really nice organ. Um, and on each side of the organ, it has spots for 
two nice white candles. Okay? So, it is a complete organ with the original bench. So a slant bench. It's like this. So it's straight and then a slant. And then that's how you sit on it and then you push the pedals. It makes it a lot easier to play. A regular chair you could use, but it's a lot harder to play. But the bench is included with it. It's a 100% original bench. So, so yeah. Whoa! Okay, there's the rod for the black keys. I didn't realize it was going to come out that easy. <laughs> okay, I better keep my hands on the black keys. Ah, because they're all going to want to go twang. There we go, hands on them. Mm. I got one that's giving me a little bit of a... Come on, pull off. There we go. I finally got it. Ew, and it's dirty. It needs to be clean. Okay. I'll push those out of the way. Need more space because of how many keys there is. Um, but I enjoy fixing accordions, you know, it's fun. Fixing things in general and getting them working again, you know, is fun. Um, or if, let's say they're working, but they're not working 100%. It's nice to fix them to that 100%, if you know what I mean, you know. And that's what we're doing here with this accordion, fixing it to 100%. I'm just going to do the honor. Here's the other rod to the white keys. They look really, really close. You know, they might be the same size. Hmm. You know, they might be the same size rods. I might have been wrong there. Hmm. I'll have to have a look, closer look at those rods. You know, and you know, you could save some money too. You know, fixing a coin's um, at, at your, like, fixing your accordions by yourself, like, or fixing your accordions, um, the piano or button accordions at, at home, and isn't that bad. You just need to know how to do it and how to safely do it without damaging the instrument more than it already is, right? Or let's say you just want to clean it. Well, then you'll have videos that I'll, I'll be making for you to show you how to properly clean an accordion, how to properly service an accordion, uh, how to take it apart accordion and put back together. Um, but the only thing I'm doing here is the keys. I'm not taking the left side apart because that works fine. Um, it's just this side. Um, but eventually I will find another accordion that needs a lot of service. Um, this is a special type of Titano accordion. It's not you just go to the store and pick up one. I guess you could order one in from Italy. This is called a dry tone accordion. So this dry tone accordion doesn't have the musette, it doesn't have any of that, just a nice dry tone. And it actually sounds pretty pretty cool. Um, but the wet tone ones would be like musette and all that. Jazz and all that. And there is wet tone sound titano accordions. Like there's one that I wish I had my hands on and it's really rare. My One of my relatives a long time ago gave me the an accordion like this, and it's called a Titano Stroller, 120 bass, black accordion, and did it have ivory or pearl? It had ivory keys, it didn't have pearl keys, but it had ivory keys. I think they made that same accordion with pearl keys too. Um, and up here, it had a grill. In the front, in the middle, it had a knob that you'd turn. And then right here, it would have a badge Titano Stroller type badge. And then right about here, it would say Titano, I think Titano either right here or right here, and then Stroller in the back. Um, I really wish I could get my hands on that accordion because that one was a four reed in the front and three reed bass. And I tell you, that had a really nice sound. 
and even one of those with lots of problems I'd be more than interested in. So yeah. And well guys, good news. Guys and gals, last key. Alright. Ugh. This is bad. This is probably why it was squeaking. Can you guys see from No you can't. <laughs> Alright. Let me see if I can do this for you guys. You're not going to see me on camera for a second. For a little bit here. Can you see all that? Let me bring this up here. See all that dust and gunk and stuff that's in there? See how dirty that is? This accordion is filthy. It is really, really dirty. I'm going to turn it back this way so you can see it. Oh man, like this is, let me try to close, there we go, it's completely closed, the uh, grills, so if you take the two levers and go this way together gently, you can close all the grills so no dust gets into the reeds. Yeah, I'll give it a nice cleaning, and I'm sure she'll uh, come back to life. So with those grills like that, what I want to see... Just for the fun of it, you guys, I just want to see if this thing has any... Well, it has a small leak, but it's very, very small. Most likely it's because of those um, pads from the keys, because the keys are in there. That's most likely why. But a small leak like that ain't going to harm nothing. It's still considered air sealed. Okay, so back to what I was doing here with the brush. Uh, yeah, this paintbrush. I should show you guys this dust. I'm going to pick it up off the floor. I just brushed it onto the floor. Oh. I see all that dust? That was in the accordion. Here, I'll put it up here. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, that's part of it. Mm. Piece of something. Um... That's basically dust. Um, this thing is just gummed up with dust. And, uh, so what I'm doing is taking a paintbrush, cleaning everything. And this accordion, some of the issues that it has, will be completely erased. Um, and what I mean by that is there'll just be no issues anymore. Which is good, that's what we want. We want it to fully work. So this accordion is number, this front part is number 447, so there's 447 of these. This metal grill, there's 893 the metal grill made. You know, there's, you know, there'll be numbers all over this accordion on the parts saying how many were produced and made. So what we're trying to do here is just Ugh. <laughs> I just got a bunch of dust in the face. Whoops. Huh. Oh man. But yeah, it's servicing accordion correctly and I guarantee the working accordion afterwards. And if it needs new springs, you'll need those new springs before you can fix it. Um, but this one it's just going to take a little bit of a very nice cleaning and uh, bring it back to oh, see a little bit more dust to add to the pile uh, 
It's looking a lot better than it did. Um, there's a piece of wood in here that is ready to pop off. Um, that I'll just drop it down there. <laughs> I'm just gonna tip the accordion upside down here. There we go, get rid of any in there. Now I'm gonna show you guys it afterwards. It's really nice and clean. So that's good and clean. There's no problems there. So I'm gonna set this down beside me and we're gonna start cleaning some keys. So, key number one. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Check this out. I don't know if you guys will see this on camera. See on the side of the key where it says number one. Right, uh, right where my, I'll cover up the 441 there. See right there? Number one. Key one, and I can almost guarantee this other one. I'll set this down here. Number. Hmm. Can't find it on that one. So the one key had a key number one on it. Huh. Oh yeah, number two, number three, number four, number five. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So they're all numbered. So you know from one, one to whatever number they go up to. Uh, number 21 or something like that. Hmm. But anyway, I just keep them in the right ordering. That's how I do it. There's more dust underneath these, by the way. Another piece of dust to add to the... So far, that's as much dust as I got out of that part. And you know, that's honestly not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um... What I'm doing is I'm taking a toothbrush and just polishing all the dust out of there. I usually don't take isopropyl alcohol to the wood because that's not very healthy for it, but I will take it to the um, pearl keys. Um, all you need to do is just take a brush and you know brush it and then oil the part before putting it back in. Um, 99.9% .9 sure that that squeaking should no longer happen due to it being specially oiled up and all that. Okay, so I'll just... Yeah, I'm going to show you the front of these pads. So they still work, but this is why we're going to always have a slight leak. Have a look at that pad really close. See that? See how there's no fluff on that pad anymore? See? Here, let me move my finger in front. See right here? Right here how it's nice and fluffy and then the rest, right, these two spots are fluffy but this isn't. This rest of this pad should be fluffy just like that. So that's a wore out pad and they're all like that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're all like that. So there's going to be wire out pads, but they still have enough on there where it can hold air. So we're still good. So to clean the pearl, what I do is I take some spray alcohol and just give it a bit of a spray like that. Then I take a cloth. And I just give it a real nice good polish. And I'll show you guys how nice this, guys and gals, how nice this looks afterwards. Um, so remember before they're sort of yellowed? Wait till the end after this. And I'm using 99. I know this bottle says 70%, but in, inside the bottle is actually 99% IPA. It's just the original label that's on the bottle. Okay. Give it a bit of spray. And 
also these keys are going to feel a lot nicer when I play the accordion because they're sort of sticky a little bit. It's not, you know, not the end of the world, but it's kind of nice when they're nice and not sticky because you can run your, your fingers right up and then right down because lots of songs require you to be able to do that, you know. Check out how nice this key looks like. Look at that key. Look at how nice that pearl looks after that. See how shiny that is? That's what we want to see. We want every key to look that good. Okay? So if your pearl keys are yellowed quite a bit, 99% isopropyl alcohol or 100% if you can find that. And it'll go from yellow to that nice. Okay? Most of the time the yellowness is just from the oil on your fingers and stuff getting on there and over time it just you know gets a little bit dirty on the key keys and stuff like that and other times it's well sunlight can yellow up stuff like this or if you smoke um, the cigarette nicotine can cause lots of stains on the keys causing um, the keys to yellow and again isopropyl alcohol 99% or 100% does a really, really nice job. Okay, so the next key I got is one of the black keys. Okay, brush again. So, just brushing all the parts. Once I get all the keys brushed, then I'm going to grab the accordion. Um, We'll put both the rods in because we're going to do it the way that I pulled them out. I'm going to put them in the same way. Um, oh yeah, i got to also clean those rods too before. And then put, when I go to put them back in, put a little bit of oil on them. And um, you'll make sure everything's really good. And then uh, today I'll be making another video. I might even make, let's see, where are we at here? Uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to make a part two on cleaning these because this video is going to be a real long video um, and I don't want the phone cutting out as um, I'm making it. So I'll finish cleaning this key and I'm going to make a part two. Um, oh, you know why I'm saying that? I'm brushing the pad and check this out. Huh. Well, isn't that something? See that pad? See how it's fluffy? Can you see the fluff? I just took a brush and started brushing it and it cleaned it right up. Huh. Okay. Well, that's cool. Maybe these pads can come back to life. Hmm. What do you know? This stuff evaporates fairly quick. Not as quick as um, Zippo lighter flute, but I don't like using those on piano accordions or the keys or anything like that. I like just using stuff that's not as, you know, corrosive. Or not corrosive, sorry, that's not the way of putting it. Um, not as, you know, strong. Because with um, lighter fluid, see that's his, see that nice shine on there? That's nice and clean. Um, so, alcohol, alcohol cleaner doesn't eat away or damage. IV or, or, or pearl keys or the black keys. Um, lighter fluid would da do damage or decolor everything. And like instead of being a nice color, it'll just, it'll, it'll mess things up. But it does good job for cleaning circuitry that's been water damaged. So just make sure it's fully evaporated. Anyway guys, I gotta make another part to this because my phone only has 16 gigabytes built in and it will be cutting out very soon. So, 
I'm going to end this part and start a part two. Okay, well, we'll see you guys very shortly here.